Today, almost all electronic communication is transmitted as short messages on a shared link. In the old days, we tried several kinds of links. Sometimes we used dedicated pathways of string, wires, or tubes. The early phone system was an example. In the early days of phones, every call consisted of a short-term pathway of wires between the two parties. But we also experimented with a variety of shared communication pathways. We tried sharing radio, telegraph wires, the postal service, and semaphore. Shared pathways have several drawbacks. You usually don't own or control the entire pathway. Somebody or something other than you usually delivers your message for you. They might charge you for each message. Shared messages aren't private. They can be seen or heard by others. You have to take turns talking. Shared messages usually have more message overhead. They have to identify the source and the destination of the message. You're usually forced to keep your message short because short messages are cheaper and allow more sharing. To counter all those drawbacks, shared messages have two strong advantages. Shared message infrastructure is cheaper to build and maintain. Shared message infrastructure can easily scale from a few talkers to many talkers. So today, we mostly communicate using short messages on shared pathways. So what is a short message? We normally call them packets. Packets are just standardized messages. We call them pot packets instead of messages for four good reasons. First, packets is two syllables and messages is three. When we say packets, we feel cool. It sounds like we're swearing. Three, people usually pay us more if we say we understand packets because everybody understands messages. And finally four, a message is usually a complete communication. A packet can be a fragment or a small piece of a communication. Most standardized message formats or packets have similar features. If you can figure out how to label and stamp a U.S. mail envelope, then you're well on your way to understanding Ethernet, HDMI, USB, and SMS packets. Or put another way, an 1880s telegraph engineer would pretty well instantly understand SMS. He would also have a good leg up on understanding modern network design because modern switches are fundamentally simple. When multiple links intersect, you usually need a switch. The switch keeps track of who is where and forwards messages to the correct link. In the old days, the switches used people and they could make complex forwarding decisions. Now they are automatic. Now the switching decision has to be simple because stupid machines are deciding where things go. Most internet communications utilize two different types of message. There are Ethernet messages and IP messages. Ethernet messages are optimized for local delivery and short distances. IP messages are optimized for global delivery and long distances. 
Ethernet packets have a lot of empty space inside them. Ethernet packets are shipping containers. So on most links, you see an Ethernet packet that contains or encapsulates an IP message. The internet is built using two different kinds of switch. There's the Ethernet switches. Those are called layer two switches. Ethernet switches use the Ethernet information at the beginning of the Ethernet packet. The Ethernet information specifies the next destination. And then there's IP or layer three switches. IP switches see the same Ethernet packets. They just reach inside and pull out the enclosed IP info. The IP information specifies the final destination of the communication. Most devices on the internet are complex, but the switches and routers are some of the simplest devices on the internet. They only need enough smarts to make a forwarding decision. But don't tell your boss this. The basics of Ethernet or layer two switching is Ethernet addresses are assigned to devices when they're manufactured. They should always be globally unique and they never change. Normally no two Ethernet devices have the same address. Ethernet is used to communicate with local peers and since there's a limited number of local devices, Ethernet devices, including the switches, learn who is where by listening to the network. So Ethernet devices are encouraged to originate traffic so that everybody on the local area can track each other's status and location. With Ethernet, you're talking local neighborhood. The basics of IP or layer three switching is IP addresses are assigned to devices as they move from one area of control to another area of control. IP addresses have a locally unique part, but they also specify who controls that section of the internet. Since there are an unlimited number of possible IP destinations, IP addresses, including switches, have to be configured with a subset of the local information. So IP devices have to be told their IP address, the local IP address range, and which one of the local devices acts as the pathway or the route to the outside world. IP switches are also told about one or more neighbor subnets. IP devices must limit unnecessary traffic to keep from overloading the worldwide internet. Ethernet is chatty, it's a good neighbor, it's in everybody's face all the time. The Ethernet devices volunteer all kinds of information. IP is terse. A well-designed IP device only says a few things to the local network and it never volunteers anything to the global network. But there are a lot of poorly designed IP devices on the internet. 